Hey, Game Makers! We're going to take a look at 10 more tips and tricks! If you haven't yet, make sure to check out our first tips and tricks video. As last time, this list will contain helpful tips, cool things, annoying things, and stuff! If you're ever looking for a specific plugin, trust me, there will probably be one. MB in particular has had a ton of plugins released just in the short time it's been out. But if you really need that one plugin, like right now, there are plenty of groups and communities you can join with great scrippers that would likely be more than happy to take on your request. If your game crashes with an error, you can press F8 on your keyboard to open the developer tools. This will usually tell you what the error means, where you can find it, and so on. Additionally, pressing F9 in test mode will bring up a list of your switches and variables, making it much easier to start and stop in an area for testing without having to run through three events to turn on all of the correct switches and variables. If you know anything about me, you know that I like keyboard functionality for eventing and such. Something NB lacks a lot of the time. Luckily, this isn't completely awful, as clicking Control and Enter on certain windows, like while well selecting the event commands or in the show text screen, will autosave and close the window. So today I made a teleport skill, because why not? The skill has the ability to teleport you out of regular battles, and also teleport you to the entrance of a dungeon. You'll need your teleport skill to call a common event. This event will require three switches. First, it's going to check if you're in a battle. We'll do this by activating a switch on the troops page, and using the Yep Base Troop Events plugin to make it apply to each battle. Back in our teleport common event, have another switch to check if it's in a boss battle. You'll need to switch this one manually before going into the battle. The third switch will get turned on if you enter a dungeon and we'll also need to set three variables to the player's map ID, X, and Y coordinates. You'll want to turn that switch off when you leave the dungeon. Basically, the common event will check if you're in a battle. If you're in a boss battle, it'll tell you it didn't work. If else, it will flash the screen because Silly MB got rid of using battle animations on the heroes for some reason. And then it'll abort the battle. Now, if we're not in a battle, it will check if we're in a dungeon instead. If we are, it will ask us to teleport to the entrance. If we aren't, it'll tell us it won't work. We'll also need another common event. Set it on parallel, and to run if switch I'm in a battle is on. And in the contents, turn that same switch off. This will turn it off every time we leave a battle. Now make sure to set our location variables and dungeon switch after the teleporter in the cave entrance event, and turn the dungeon switch off in the exit of the dungeon. When you go to make a big game, I'd advise doing it in chunks. Obviously, this is up to you and how you work best, but I find generally if one spends a significant amount of time doing something specific, like programming in skills, weapons, armor, etc., by the time you're done with them, you just don't feel like making your game anymore. Debug maps are your friends! Basically, the map you use when you're testing things. It pretty much ensures you don't accidentally have a random test event lying around your main game. You can duck it out all pretty like, but just a big map will usually suffice. This was mine from my Gaia's Melody and Other Epilogue game. I mean, I had two debug maps. It's a mess and I've got no idea what's going on here, and at this point half the things here probably just crash my game. But it's nice to have nonetheless. The more interesting the introduction to your game is, the better. And I'm not just talking about making a 10 minute opening cinematic full of flashy lights and exposition. Before I go on, consider this. For the most part, an RPG Maker dev's audience is directed at other RPG Maker users. It's sad, but true. Many people take one look at a game, see it's made in RPG Maker, and likely won't give it more than five minutes of their time, and that's assuming they don't immediately just think it's going to be horrible and not even try. Back to the point. The first few minutes of your game are its selling point. It's sad, and even if the rest of your game is the most unbelievably awesome thing ever, if the introduction isn't enough to engage the player, they'll never get to experience the greatness. So here are a couple sub-tips to keep in mind. If you're making any sort of opening cinematic, do not spend 10 minutes making an info intro dump. Basically, where you start up the game and go, Once upon a time, the plot happened! Here's some long, drawn-out exposition for you! 
don't pull a Star Wars. In most cases, it's much better to show than to tell. Text is fine, just make sure to keep it short and to the point. Players are playing to play the plot, not read the plot. If you're starting in a town or place with other characters, do everything possible to make them engaging for the player. You don't need to make the area long or drawn out, but if you manage to make the player bond with the first town, it'll be much more of an impact when it inevitably gets destroyed or something. If you can make your intro more interesting, do it. Instead of starting in a town talking to people, start in the middle of a mission or in a life or death situation. We're fighting the final boss. Obviously, these won't work for every story, and there's nothing wrong with starting in a town to talk to people. It's just usually much more fun and much more memorable for the player to start the game fighting through a mission than having a text scroll that says our hero is fighting a mission. As Endless Gaming Today put it, your intro should introduce the world, but not bog down the world. If you're planning to seriously make a game, do not use sample maps in it. And I will give you a very, very good reason why. As mentioned, if you're trying to get your game around, the main audience is other RPG makers, who probably know all of the sample maps by heart, and have seen them used in other games. And let me tell you, from recent experience, it gets a little repetitive playing games that all use the exact same maps. That's like playing every Final Fantasy, but they all used Final Fantasy 1's maps. The sample maps are there to show you what to do and how to learn how to make maps, not to be used in every single RPG Maker game ever. Deploy is a lie. Like cake. You'd think, as deployment is under file, right where compression is on all the other RPG makers, that it would compress and encrypt your file. <laughs> Lol, nope. It does nothing. Okay, not entirely. It removes the editable file. Sort of. This is the deployed version of Misk Adventures, the quick game I made for my Let's Make a Game series. Now, if you go under the triple W folder, and hey, look, it's all my files! So basically, anyone can go steal your resources. Yay! But Echo, they at least can't edit my game, right? <laughs> nope, sorry. See, if you copy all the files into a new non-deployed game and paste them over top, all you need to do is click that game's editable file, and hey, look, now I can completely screw around with Misk Adventures. Yay! Now, I'm sure there are ways to actually encrypt them, but MV doesn't seem to have that by default anymore. I read that the reason was because of the whole export to iOS thing or something, but really? No one is ever going to love your game as much as you. Not everyone might even like your game. When releasing a game, just keep in mind that you've spent the last however long with your characters, plot, etc. You've had years to get to know them. Your players only have however long your game is. So don't take it to heart if someone thinks your game is just okay. It's important to you. You tried your best. You love your game, and that's what matters. Anyway, that's all for more tips and tricks! If you want even more tips and tricks, feel free to ask me in the comments. Until next time, see you later, gamers!